So President Fitz, thank you for that lovely introduction. And I want to assure you that, President, you can relax. I've done my homework for today. Because, you know, whenever I take on a role, I do my research to truly understand the character that I'm playing. So when I played a secret agent, a, a sniper in red, I learned how to fire a gun. And when I played the queen, I learned how she talks and how she walks and how she interacts with her advisors. And, oh, and when I played this sadistic, horrible teacher in Teaching Mrs. Tingle, I went to observe some professors at LSU. <laughs> Yes, they taught me everything. <clears throat> the second point about commencement speeches is talk about your journey and connect it to everything you have in common with your audience. So, today's speech will contain advice for any of you born in England who decide to become Shakespearean actresses and end up doing nude scenes in ten films. <laughs> I just mentioned that just to see if any of your fathers, you know, are getting out their cell phones right now to Google me. <laughs> Dads, stop it. Inappropriate, put it away. I mean the phone. Something I believe that you will remember in the year 2057, because it is so true. Here it is. Get ready. Whether you're in Tipitina's, French Quarter, or the Oval Office, no good can ever come from tweeting at 3 a.m. <laughs> it's inevitable that I would fall for a place where it is virtually obligatory to have at least one feathered costume in your, in your wardrobe at all times. A city where you can walk the streets with a cocktail in your hand, let alone one where you can turn the corner at five o'clock in the morning, find a solitary sax player providing the, the soundtrack to your morning commute. It's funky, it's beautiful, it's raunchy, it's sophisticated, it's elegant, it's raw and imaginative and witty and cultured and violent and sleepy. Believe me, long after you graduate, New Orleans will remain a part of your soul. Okay, good, four minutes in. Good.